How many months are we thinking this will take to complete? This is about a four month project. We have a very short window of time to do this. So we're talking about getting in here in 90 days or less. That's 12 weeks. Our contractor says construction will take 120 days. My client needs it done in 90 days, no excuses. Someone is not going to be happy. I'm Kaylin Rothhouse. And that's me and my first building project. And my first power lunch. For as long as I can remember, I've wanted to be a designer. And now here I am creating functional and fabulous spaces. This is my client, Mark Alfieri, founder and chairman of Brandstar. And that's Carmen, his executive vice president of operations. They've asked me to take this building and turn it into a modern and efficient workspace. It's going to be a challenge, but in the end, the new space will be functional, and of course, it will most definitely be fabulous. Brandstar is a branded entertainment company that produces programming for network television. They've grown through the years from eight employees at the start to over 145 today. But like a lot of companies, while they've grown from a business standpoint, their office space has not kept up with their growth. In our current environment, we're on four different floors, which is creates silos within our organization because we're not together. It doesn't give the company a sense of cohesion, but there is a vision for a new space. But the new space has its challenges. Mark is moving 135 employees of the company from a 20,000 square foot space to a new building he's purchased, but the new building only has 11,000 square feet. The challenge Mark's given to me is to put the same number of people into a smaller workspace and make everyone comfortable and more productive. The building is what really inspired my design concept. It's these two intersecting rectangles that come together, and that's exactly what's gonna happen in his company. All these different departments and cultures are gonna come together, and a new culture will emerge. One of the things that I'm excited about is the fact that we're all going to be together in one space. And we believe that that's going to allow us to have a collaborative work environment and a much more productive work environment. And Kaylin assures me, even though it, it might be a little tighter, that it, we're not gonna feel on top of each other, but yet we're gonna get the effectiveness of being together. At this point, Mark's approved my design for the new building. He's appointed me as the interior designer and project manager. I'm working with Bill Branning from BSA, our general contractor, along with Mark Furman, our site supervisor, and Alberto Ramuto from Icon Design Group, Inc. Alberto's our architect, and he's taken my schematic design and created the working drawings to submit for permit. Today, I'm meeting with both Bill and Alberto to talk about the design and timeline for the project. Mark, the building owner, really wants to move this project along, so I want to make sure we're all on the same page. We've designed a complicated space, and Bill's gonna have to build it for us. So I know we're gonna have to work together to meet these deadlines because Mark wants to move his employees into this space. What we need to do is start with the demolition. Right Way will come in and perform the demolition, and then right after they're done, we gotta get the building dry. As you know, we're replacing the windows, and we're adding new windows, we're filling in the garage doors, and then right after they're done, we'll get the concrete subcontractor in here for the day-to-day -day construction on the building, I'm going to be working with Mark Furman. He's got a lot of experience with all the technology going into the space. I'm the middleman between the general contractor, you know, and, and all the stuff that's put out out of the office and the des design team and the designer and make sure everything kind of comes together properly. To make this new building work, it's going to require a high level of technology, and that's where we're really going to depend on Mark. Technology in this space here, I mean, between the lighting and the building management systems and all the media, the video walls is, is amazing. The low voltage work going through this and the infrastructure is very complex and uh, difficult to keep up with, you know, because it changes a little bit as we build. Before we can start any new construction, we need to clear everything out of the old building. That includes walls, windows, doors, and all of the electrical. We've hired Rightway Demolition, a company with a lot of experience in this type of work. Tony Stern is the company owner and will oversee all of the demolition. Getting this building ready for a new construction is not as easy as it might seem. There's more to it than just taking a wrecking ball and knocking walls down. We started by taking all the acoustical ceilings out, cleaning up the ceilings as we were going. We took all the studs out, the conduit, the wiring. Uh, we cleaned up the ceilings. We tore down all the drywall partitions. 
Uh, we separated the metal from the trash uh, to recycle the metal. And uh, at the same time, we were taking up the floor with the floor machine and uh, hauling it at the same time. We don't play around, we come in and get the job done. And get the job done they did. All this demolition has created a lot of scrap that needs to be disposed of. Tony's crew is separating everything and taking away as much as possible for recycling. Now that the building is just a shell, it's time for the fun part. We get to build it. As Mark Furman and his team begin framing out the building, I'm going to turn my attention to the design plans for the floors. I kind of broke it out into zones. I broke it out into the high traffic zones and the wet areas and the lower traffic areas. When considering what flooring material to put down in these high traffic zones, I wanted to use the same material in the wet areas. So I figured that concrete would be a great solution. I just needed to know, could I treat the existing surface and you know just add a coating? Like, what were my options? And then I came across Supercrete. So I've asked Tracy Lakovich, the president and CEO of Supercrete, to come over to the job site and show me some samples, and I'm really anxious to see what she's got. Kayla really liked the idea of keeping the existing concrete look but the concrete has been damaged. There was carpet and tile down there previously, and so they've had to remove all that, which has left a lot of damage, a lot of glue and mastic, and there's really no way to preserve that concrete in its existing condition. So the best way is to resurface it with Supercrete products. So Tracy, thank you so much for preparing these samples today. I wanted to run through these and first talk about the floor. So tell me about some of these different options that you prepared for the floor. Okay, looking at some of the inspiration that you had and wanting to keep something more of a simple modern look. We want to do something that's going to be durable enough for the high pedestrian traffic in this commercial environment. What makes the difference between the darker? Is there color in this one? There's not color, but again, this is the solvent-based sealer that really enhances it and provides somewhat of a glossy sheen to it. Mm -hmm. Where this is our Clear Seal Plus, which is a water-based sealant. This is what is used in retail stores, um, malls, anywhere where there's a lot of pedestrian traffic. I like this look better. Okay. Would you recommend this as Absolutely. It's a, it's a more natural finish, and you'll still have the protection that you need for the floor. You know, I think Mark is on board with the concrete. Originally in the building there was porcelain on the floor and Mark seemed a little partial to it, but I think I've convinced him to go with the concrete. I'm not really sure they're happy I'm here helping them, but I really want to try this. I wanted to do something a little special in the bathroom. Designers are starting to turn to concrete as a modern option for decorative finishes for walls. Today, I'm working with Brett Klein, the representative for Supercrete products. We're starting with the bathroom walls and the impressions that are really going to make this special. Putting concrete on walls is not technically unusual. I mean, you have masonry work all the, all the time. You do stucco, the custom ability of it all more and more starting to be used in more of a decorative application, like doing a wood stamp or, or rocks, adds that modern feel, which is really gonna tie in nice. And you can see we have nice knots in this old world um, reclaimed wood stamp. Yep. And so what we can do is we can, we can put this on the wall, get our impression. And then how do you create the delineation between planks? So what we have is we have these wheels, and they're called grout wheels. So you have your skin up, this will then, once we remove this, we'll go along the wall and it will tool in every line. And so we'll use the laser to make sure we have it nice and level. And then this gives us the ability to do any height or length of plank that we want. I'm really excited I get to actually create this pattern with the installer on the job site. Um, it's really a design build situation for this wall application. And I'm very excited to see how it turns out. They're catching up to me. <laughs> That's my spot, it's not so smooth. I mean, Kaylin here, that ups the nervousness a little bit because she's gonna be very picky on what it looks like. You know, getting a, a nice straight wood plank is probably one of the more difficult things to do on a wall. So it was a lot of fun yesterday to actually help them install the Supercrete on the walls myself. You know, it helps you learn a lot about materials as a designer because in order to understand how materials come together and how they actually work, it creates better detailing. For me to understand that that product, when applying it to the wall, it was actually a lot harder and drier than I had thought. It was difficult and a lot more challenging than it looked. The next step is to let the walls cure for about 24 hours. This is a little bit wet from up top. 
but all down here is where we came yesterday. And we still got to come in and we, we use a product called Super Scrub and it cleans off all the release and anything else that's stuck to it. Okay. And then we can come in and seal it. I like what we've done so far, but now we have to wait and see how everything is going to look after it's had time to cure. on the construction site today, as you can see, with all the crazy sounds, the heat in Florida, it's really hot. And I'm managing four different projects at once. Uh, we have the windows going in today, and actually our doors aren't coming in today, which is unfortunate. It's moving a little bit slower than I would like, but it's getting done. The problem is we don't have doors yet, and so we can't get the building sealed up and under air. One of the reasons the doors are delayed is we need to get the electronic hardware installed on the doors for the building access system. I'm working with Wafa Windows in order to specify the appropriate window glass and framing for the exterior windows in the building. Um, I've designed new window openings because it, before it was a warehouse and we really require a lot of natural daylight for an office space for employees to be productive and feel happy. It's never easy installing new windows and doors into an existing building. A lot of things can go wrong. So we've asked b and Services, a company with a lot of experience, to install both our windows and doors. Brett and his partner Tom have over 25 years of experience retrofitting windows and doors here in South Florida. I would say the top three reasons why you would replace your windows and doors here in South Florida is uh, due to the number one reason being energy efficiency, and number two would be uh, security enhancement, and then number three would be uh, effortless hurricane protection. The problem with sizing when you do retrofits um, is you don't know what was there before. So we're dealing with an existing building that may not have been plumb, it may not have been square, so now we're trying to put a plumb and square product into a non-square and plumb opening, so there's always a challenge with that. Windows that we're putting in here, uh, the Wausau windows, are, are very nice. They're insulated, they're soundproof, and they're very nice design. They're uh, a little bit different than we're used to uh, installing here because there's a certain clip that, that comes into the space, but um, you know, it's designed for movement and it's a really nice system. We're rated for 175 mile an hour. That's our, our code for wind loads here. It's in the building code that we have to use impact resistant windows um, or we're not even allowed to replace the uh, product. It's been tested to withstand a two by four traveling at 55 miles an hour. And not only after it's been impacted, it needs to stay in that same frame and intact after it's been impacted so through the duration of the storm. Additionally, there is a design component to this glass in particular because this is a very energy efficient product. It blocks a lot of the heat coming in. In fact, I had this sample sitting at my window at my desk and um, it actually was helping prevent a lot of the heat coming into my office space currently. Energy efficiency is the main reason why we sell these windows now. They have technology in this glass that only allows 25% of the heat to get through the glass. Having the proper lighting in an office space is extremely important. It all starts with the natural light from the windows. We've taken the first step in giving everyone a productive and healthy workspace. Is our doors in yet? We're looking good. We got doors and windows. When you walk into the new space, you're gonna be entering in the reception area. And I really wanted to create, you know, it's a corporate headquarters. I wanted to create this feeling of grandiosity. You know, when you enter somewhere with hard surfaces, you're not immediately feeling relaxed and comfortable. It's a very serious environment. So the Supercrete floor, even though maybe that's not the first thing you're gonna notice, you're gonna feel the, the material under your feet and it'll create this sense of arrival. Um, you'll transition from the sidewalk into the space. It really will create this grand entrance. Applying Supercrete to the existing concrete is really a multi-layer process that can take up to several days. We've asked Rick Hartman and his team to install the Supercrete throughout the building. One of the greatest things about the decorative concrete industry out there is that this product is designed to last a lifetime, unlike the carpets that are changed out annually at points and tiles and other things out there. This stuff will be here for years to come. Halen did make a very wise choice in not removing this slab. Just the overall cost of having to do that, you fill up landfills, 
you fill up all these places with material that is unusable again. And now what you do is we put, we just cover it. We're gonna make this concrete look like it was poured yesterday. And what this process does is allow us to come in and take this old foundation, this concrete floor, and make it look like a clean slate of concrete that's more durable than the original concrete itself. I think the important thing with Kaylin's vision was that she wanted to take this existing slab of concrete and make it a part of this building, make it a showpiece that people could look at and say, wow, that's different, that's cool. While the floors are being worked on, the low voltage wiring is also going in. Wiring.com, one of the first contractors to arrive on the job site and probably one of the last to leave at the end, is handling all the complex wiring for the building. We need to have a complete picture of the entire jigsaw puzzle first while we're still working in pencil, not in concrete. Everything from the building management systems, the HVAC controllers, the monitors on the wall, the microphones in the conference room for telepresence. Compiled the specifications and the needs of each vendor, and then we figured out how it was actually gonna go into the building. Sometimes wires ran overhead, sometimes they ran in the floor, sometimes they ran up the walls. All the high-tech equipment that will be installed requires miles and miles of low-voltage wiring. Well, the doors have finally arrived. That means we're able to seal the building and get everything under air. Trust me, there's going to be a lot of happy workers today. After all, it's summertime, it's South Florida, and it's really hot. They're energy efficient, and they meet all the hurricane codes here in South Florida. The Wausau doors are like the windows, uh, built to withstand high impact, 170 mile an hour winds. The doors have a nice finish, nice blue tint on the glass, and they accept the electronic hardware for the building access system. On the outside, we've installed biometric or fingerprint technology for access control to the building. It will help the company manage employees, contractors, and visitors, and most importantly, it's going to enhance building security. In addition, the doors come equipped with panic bar hardware. Panic bars are important because they unlock doors during an emergency. All the hardware inside these doors is here to improve employee safety. It was a lot of hard work, but the result speaks for itself. The Supercrete really revitalized all of the existing concrete in the building. Well, the first chapter in our corporate renovation is about completed. Mark, the building owner and founder of the company, has given us what might be an unrealistic timeline. Bill Branning, our contractor, is looking at 120 days for completion. There's a significant difference there between what the owner wants and what our contractor thinks is possible. I like the progress that we're making on this project. My only concern, and I've, I've stressed this to Kaylin, is that we have to get our employees in here and stay on our 90-day timeline. And I'm a little concerned that we may be getting behind schedule, so we have to get this on track. Despite our problems with the construction time, we have made good progress. The building was gutted out and we started the build. We've made significant progress with all the framing and the drywall. Most importantly, we have the building sealed. We have all of the windows and doors in, and that means we can get the building under air. I'm also very pleased with the look of the Wausau windows and doors. They're energy efficient, and they provide protection for all the South Florida weather. b and did a great job with all of the installation. The installers of Supercrete have completed the bathroom installation. It was a lot of hard work, but the result speaks for itself. It really presents an interesting look. We also have all the concrete floors installed. The Supercrete really revitalized all of the existing concrete in the building. It's a great entrance that will help provide the impact I'm looking for when people enter the building. Now, we move to the second chapter of our construction. We've scheduled all of the glass installation next week for the offices and conference rooms, along with the vanities. We also have all the floors going in for the meeting area and office spaces. Every day on this construction site is a challenge. We have over 50 contractors installing sophisticated, high-tech, cutting-edge technology. Some of it's never been seen before. It's going to be quite a ride, but I can't wait to see how it's all gonna turn out.